Here's another cervix. And if you notice in the uh, northern hemisphere over here, you could see a normal um, maturation pattern within the uh, squamous epithelium. And you could also see abundant uh, endocervical glands underlying this. You could also see inflammation, which is common even in the most totally normal cervixes. Notice, however, that as you travel south, the epithelium is not as normal as you see in the north, and it starts to become dysplastic. Sure, there is some maturation pattern, but it's not as complete as what you saw. In addition, underlying this, notice that some of these endocervical glands, which should normally be columnar, are replaced by these same kind of dark cells as well. So this is not just squamous metaplasia. This is a very, very atypical metaplasia. And it's at least, at the very least, severe dysplasia. And most pathologists would probably just call this a carcinoma in situ involving endocervical glands. And if you weren't convinced with that, take a look at an area like this, for example, in which you could see even though there is some maturation pattern in the superficial epithelium, underneath it, you'll have these nests of cells which have no maturation as well. And in addition, they have all the very, very usual features of malignancy. There's an abnormal mitosis. There's an abnormal mitosis. There's one. There's hardly any cytoplasm. These cells are big and dark and ugly. And whenever you see something like this, you know as a slam dunk, knee-jerk reflex, you can call this cancer. Thank you very much. This happens to be carcinoma in situ, however. And if you look very carefully at the surrounding areas, as well as other slides, which we're taking, uh, you, they are replacing endocervical glands because you can see this is part of an endocervical glands. Whereas if you were to see this kind of tissue completely within stroma, you might suspect that this is no longer in situ, but it was infiltrating, which changes its prognostic significance significantly. Bye-bye.